Hello children, it's my turn to read a couple of chapters from the fabulous Adolphus Tips book. And we're up to Tuesday, October the 5th, 1943. My birthday. I was born 12 years ago today at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, I've been calling myself 12 for a long time, and now I really am. All I want to be now, though, is 13. And even 13 isn't old enough. I so want to be much older than I am, but not old like grandfather, so that I walk bent and that my hands are hard and wrinkly and veiny. I don't want a drippy nose and hairs growing out of my ears, but I do want the years to hurry on by until, hmm, until I'm about 17. So school and bloomers and long division are over and done with so that no one can take my kittens away and drown them. It'll be good when I'm 17, because the war will be over by then. That's for sure. Grandfather says that we're already winning, and so it can't be long until it's finished. Then I can go up to London on the train. I've never been on a train. And I can see the shops and ride on those big red buses and go on the underground. Barry Turner's told me all about it. He says there's lights in the streets, millions of people everywhere and cinemas and dance halls. His dad used to work in a cinema before the war. Well, before he was killed. He told me that one day. That was the first thing he's ever told me about his dad. Which reminds me, I still haven't had a letter from my dad. I think he's still cross with me after what I said. I wish, I wish I hadn't said it. I had a dream about him the other night. I don't usually remember my dreams at all. But I remember this one. Well, some of it anyway. He was back at home milking cows again, but he was in uniform with his tin helmet on. It was scary because when I came into the milking parlour, I spoke to him and he never looked up. I shouted, but he still never looked at me. It was like one of us wasn't there, but we were. We both were. Monday, November the 1st, 1943. Pinch, punch, first day of the month. Slap and a kick for being so quick. Punch in the eye for being so sly. Barry kept saying it to me every time he saw me. It was really annoying. In the end, I shouted at him and hurt his feelings. I know I shouldn't have. He was only trying to be friendly. He didn't cry, but he nearly did. But tonight, I feel worse about something else something much worse. Ever since Bloomers came, I've been giving her a hard time. We all have, but me most of all. I'm really good at giving people a hard time when I want to. I cheeked her when she first came because I didn't like her and she got ratty and she punished me. So I cheeked her again, she punished me again and on it went. And after that, I just could never get on with her at all. And I've been mean to her ever since. And now this has happened. The vicar came into school today and told us he'd been teaching us for the morning because Mrs. Blumfeld wasn't feeling very well. She wasn't ill so much as sad. He said she was sad because she'd just heard the news that her husband, who's in the Merchant Navy, had been lost at sea in the Atlantic. His ship had been torpedoed. They picked up a few survivors but Mrs. Blumfield's husband wasn't one of them. The vicar told us that when she came back into school, we had to be very good and kind so as not to upset her. Then he said we should close our eyes and hold our hands together and pray for her. I did pray for her too, but I also prayed for myself because I don't want God to have his own back on me for all the horrible things I've said and thought about her. I prayed for my dad too that God wouldn't make him die in the desert just because I'd been mean to Mrs. Mrs. Blumfeld. That I hadn't meant when I said I wanted him to die because he drowned the kittens. I've never prayed so hard in my life. Usually my mind wanders when I'm supposed to be praying, but it didn't today. After lunch, Mrs. Blumfeld came into school. She had no lipstick on. She looked pale and cold. She was trembling a little too. 
We left a letter for her on her desk, which we'd all signed to say how sorry we were about her husband. She looked very calm, as if she was in a bit of a daze. She wasn't crying or anything, not until she read our letter. Then she tried to smile at us through her tears and said it was very thoughtful of us, which it wasn't because it was the vicar's idea, but we didn't tell her that. We all went round whispering, being extra good and quiet all day. I feel so bad for her now because she's all alone. I won't call her bloomers ever again. I don't think anybody else will either. So now you're gonna to have to wait for the next chapter and part of the story. I'm not sure who's reading that, but I hope you enjoyed it.